we, we sailed down from Annapolis to here we're in Deltaville uh, in a um, lower Chesapeake region and it's just absolutely gorgeous today it's a beautiful day and so we're just taking the night we don't have a good weather window to Bermuda yet so we decided we're just gonna hang out for a couple of days wait for that to get you know get sorted with the weather a little bit um, and it was just so, so much work the last couple of days it's just been it's just everything was just I don't know we've had the entire boat torn apart and I should have videotaped it but we were just we said kind of almost demoralized by how much there was to do and and then to finally pull it together and get to go sailing last night although we motored most of the way uh, it was just it's not great at wind angle force but you know that's how it goes and so we're gonna wake up tomorrow and see how it looks we're looking at windy and predict wind and trying to find a find a, f a passage that passage plan that works we don't want to die out there we have to find something that we can sail in and right now there's some just brutal systems out, out, out to sea a lot of cruising boats down here getting ready to stage to either go down to the Bahamas or um, or out to Bermuda like we're getting ready to do and uh, you know, I always think about the lower Chesapeake Bay or actually all of the Chesapeake Bay is having a very New England feel um, to, to it and, and it just has this beautiful look uh, that um, and just great great architecture and, uh, and neat neat place to be I'm very, very uh, taken by the location Expect to see some guys like rappel into the. They dropped a. Dropped a harness before. It's quiet. Yeah. We docked here in Yorktown, and the <laughs> the guys over on this yacht gave us the access code to get in and out of the gate. So the marina is actually closed. So, but look at Talisman, beautiful. What you doing, Wayne? I'm looking at departure planning, trying to figure out what we're doing. We're looking right now at Friday the 12th to leave here. Um, and I'm just trying to see what the various models say in terms of direction. Mm -hmm. We have a little paralysis by analysis going on. Exactly. We don't want to um, be in that. Yeah, we're trying to avoid like really nasty weather. But it's kind of like a NASCAR thing, you know, you have to head for the crash because it won't be there by the time you arrive. At least that's what you hope. That fills in on the last day again, kind of nasty. I don't like that part. <laughs> if we're going Black off, if bad. we're going off the wind, then we're in yeah. better shape than if we're trying to beat into it. And that's what we were yeah. seeing last week. And we're week. past the past the Gulf Stream by then, so yeah. it should be okay. And then the winds are still pushing us into Bermuda. Mm -hmm. It's just if we're still out there on the 18th or 19th, then it actually is light enough that we're probably able to motor into it. Yeah, we have to motor. All right. <laughs> Well, you know, um, we've, we're heading to the bottom of the Chesapeake Bay on our way to Bermuda, and the weather is extremely unsettled offshore, but it's been that way for almost three weeks now, and it, we don't really know what to do other than to put Talisman to the test and, and, and hope for the, hope everything works you know, well. Um, as, as we've prepped, we've done as much as we can to get the boat ready for heavy weather sailing. And there's just not a whole lot we can do now except to just go. But we're heading out, and the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel is right in front of us. Got some shipping traffic, there's big tankers on the move here, and uh, yeah, we're, we're in pretty good shape for the moment. Unfortunately, our choices are either having no wind or having pretty high wind. And uh, so what we've done is we've tried to choose to a, a, a weather window that has weather coming on the stern, even though it's pretty heavy, at least the forecast is, um, 
we, if we're running off the wind, it should be a little bit less. We can take winds up into the 30s relatively easy as long as they're coming from behind us. Uh, if we're trying to beat into that kind of wind, we really can't do it at all. Uh, it just is not going to happen. The best we can do even under engine power is to stay kind of stationary um, and wait for that to go away. And some of the, the systems we're seeing by the North Atlantic are just pulling big winds up past Bermuda. And so we're, uh, you know, we wish we had just, I don't know what I can say about it. I wish I could just do a 20 knot, you know, beam reach all the way there, but that's oftentimes not in the cards when you're, you know, in the, in the central Atlantic. A little bit of a tide pushing us out. We're seeing seven knots um, of speed over ground versus six knots of boat speed. So we've timed it to kind of have the current take us out of the bay. I don't, I don't have to fight it. The sails are fully deployed, but we're still under, we're just motor sailing because we don't have enough wind to really get us out of here. But it's helping. The engine's kind of on idle. We're a little bit above idle. I think we're running about 1200, 1500 RPM. There it goes. This is this is how it starts. People sometimes ask me if it's if it's stressful to le to leave on these big passages. Like, how do you go offshore? And the, and the answer really is the tri plotters make you feel a lot more comfortable about it. You just set a waypoint on Bermuda and sit back, and the next thing you know, you know the United States is disappearing, you know, over the stern. And and that's that's the way it's always worked in the past. And so you just have to kind of just down and go do it uh, it's we're comfortable with a fairly sizable boat that's designed for offshore sailing and I know that people with um, the lighter boats are a lot more concerned about these types of things uh, but heavy seas and, and, and whatnot and we're gonna have to we're gonna you know we could get our butt kicked on this passage easily uh, we've been seeing winds north of 40 knots um, in some of the forecasts uh, over the last week and now it's been kind of tailing off and that's what we're doing we're trying to catch between two systems and make a run across but it's six days usually five to six days to get to bermuda and within that period of time the weather forecast can change completely so it's uh that's the that's the danger so you know you just do the best you can do this is scott he's one of our guest crew for the passage what do you think it's got uh, I'm thinking we're we're ready to go. We're finally out there, so uh, it's been been great so far. So a uh, uh, little bit of motor sailing now, and it's going to pick up, and then we'll be out uh, from the bridge and into the Atlantic, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Perfect. Just pretend like you're doing something important. We're looking at the Captain Scott. Mr. Scott, how are the engines? <laughs> They're rolling. My parents, my poor wee parents. Motor no on. What do you think, Marty? Loving it. Great time so far. <laughs> Easy first day. We'll see how it goes this evening. Yeah, we've been motoring. Beautiful sunset, though. It's a little rolly out here, but it's been heavy weather the last couple of days. Dolphins. Marty brought his camera up. Next thing you know, we got dolphins. He is good luck. It's two days in a row. Exactly. They love you. We're a couple of hundred miles from land. We're uh, not going out on on deck. It's a little rolly, but how fun is that? Have these guys with us around the Gulf Stream. Temperature's gone up from 60 to 72 degrees. We've got a four-knot current pushing us, and it's just 
pretty nice out here. Bye guys, thanks for visiting. So we are day two uh, from Yorktown, Virginia, headed to Bermuda. Uh, we've been in the Gulf Stream for about, about six or seven hours. Uh, and uh, we saw the temperature go from high 50s to 68 to 72 and then now it's jumped to about 77 I think and we uh, we're hitting about eight knots of current so we deviated north based on a predict wind model and then hopefully to catch some more wind finally turn off the motor For a while. All right. Well, cruising along, getting pushed by the Gulf Stream too. He's screaming. Everybody's happy. We're almost there. God. Everybody's happy at nine knots, right? Yeah. We'll be there in five minutes. Yeah, we're doing six and a half knots through water, but speed over ground, we're, we're, we're getting pushed by this by the Gulf Stream, and it's, it's, it's giving us a lot of speed. What did you say? Nine? Nine and a half. Nine now. and a half. Sweet. Ten. Ten one. Well, when I came on shift, it was blowing about force five winds and now it's up to force seven and even force eight. Uh, we've reefed the jib in almost to the second reefing point and are thinking of doing a third reef. Um, and uh, the, the seas are coming up behind us. They gave me a little bath earlier so luckily it's pretty darn warm now that we're into the Gulf Stream current. Uh, it's about 30, 78 degrees. Uh, in the water, we started at 60 degrees, so this is really nice. Um, Scott's over there wearing t-shirt and shorts, man. Me, I got like 15 layers on, and I'm wet, but it'll be good. Scott, where are we? Uh, we are in the Gulf Stream right now, and uh, a little bit north, we're headed south now, um, and uh, should be out uh, probably about midnight. Getting eight knots. Got some good sized waves following us. And nobody for miles. your watch you were on last night uh good? yes yeah it went well it went well we ended up uh jobbing the boat uh um and uh during the night and that went well um so uh overall very successful I had a good time yeah i'm 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 kind of doing the jive and i'm telling scott i'm like grab that sh grab that line and stick it around that thing there I'm not, i want him to put a sheet around the winch and like like cinch it in and he's like Dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> 
be a little bit more specific <laughs> with your orders. But it all went well. Oh my, it was late. We were all tired. <laughs> yeah, the job went well though and set us up uh, going into Bermuda. So that's uh, all the models uh, look really good where we positioned ourselves. And uh, Kevin is the uh, expert weatherman. So no, that far well. from that, but you know, the information that you get from Predict Wind and it's through the Iridium Go is just an incredible uh, tool. I mean, it really is. I mean, stuff that nobody had even, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very handy to, to be able to see where you are with weather kind of pretty much all the time. Out here is, it says it's on AIS. Says it's not under command. It's just sitting out there. So you don't know what's going on there. Well, it's four o'clock in the morning, and we've just been through two hours of pretty severe squalls. Uh, we've uh, had our uh, challenge with our jib halyard, thinking it might have wrapped around the top of the of the sail, and it's preventing us from furling the jib in all the way. Uh, so we've been uh, managing the, the process by uh, sitting up on deck and just keeping the boat on the verge of luffing through some of these squalls. It's been quite fun. What do you think, Kev? What do I think? It's, it's sailing. It's, it is what it is. And I'd be happy if we didn't have it, but it's, it's here and there's so far no damage or anything. So, um, you know, I'm a little bummed about that. That head salt, you know, it's a constant problem. I've been like this all the time. And, um, I'm sure if wake up tomorrow, it'll work fine and we won't be able to figure out what, what the issue is. So. Could have just been pressure. Yeah, I mean, it was under. We were, pressure. we were trying to furl it in probably 45 knots of wind. It probably isn't the best time to try that. A bit of a crap night here on Talisman, but we are getting through it. Um, the squalls are finally done and the uh, sunrise is here. I've just taken over the shift. Bouncing around pretty good. Just got a scrap of our jib out still. Pretty much no main. I'm down below because everybody's sleeping and I don't really want to go out on deck by myself right now so I'm just gonna stay here in the nav station and hang out right over there in the little red light. We've got a good following sea. Uh, excuse me, I take that back. It's not a following sea at all. It's kind of a cross sea, uh, but the wind's coming from our back quarter, so uh, we're moving along pretty nicely with just that little bit of jib. So it's, it is what it is. I'm just glad the storms are over.
before. It's gotten a little fuzzy overnight with uh, the squalls. And uh, right now we're just bouncing around out here trying to avoid a few more squalls. This one went by us a little while ago. Just missed us, which was great. And Scott's here helping me wait out this next one. Over here, which we're trying to zigzag a bit around. We've been basically taking the tack of heading up a bit into the wind as the storm approaches. Um, our, our jib, we can't furl it all the way in right now. We think we've got the head, the halyard wrapped. Uh, so we've got to deal with that. So we're just keeping it out, keeping it loose, letting it luff slightly as we go through the squall, uh, putting the engine on to make sure we've got a, uh, an extra source of power and just in case we need it. And right now we're just waiting for this next one to come through and hopefully get back to sail. Day five. We are about oh, 70 miles from Bermuda, and our weather has gotten much nicer. Seas have calmed down significantly. We've got a following sea, and uh, we're basically tacking downwind, or I should say, jiving downwind. We're doing broad reaches on either side of the rum line. Uh, because uh, Kelton doesn't really like going down one straight and uh, it's uh, a lot quicker if we, if we do the jibes. So that's what we're doing and uh, while I'm talking to you, the wind is shifting around. We've got a good 30 degrees of wind shift um, back and forth so you really got to pay attention to what the boat's doing otherwise it starts uh, luffing up on you or trying to, trying to jibe on its own. So we're just having a great time. Almost there. Sixty miles to go. There's Bermuda down there at the bottom. Is it possible you build? Is that where you want? Last night, middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning, um, in Bermuda, they cleared us in. Couldn't believe it. They actually wanted to clear us in. They, they did not want to wait till today for that. So we did that, um, and then we went to sleep. And now we're back awake. And here's Bermuda and St. George's Harbor. Put the oyster back there. And it looks like. Still safely outside the channel, and we're gonna see what they can do. Looks like no boats on the customs dock, and that's good because I don't want to put the dinghy together for our COVID testing. Which they say that they're gonna they're gonna take care of her later this morning. Um, yeah, so we, you know, it's, it's we're all a little bit shell shocked and brain damaged and all the rest of it today still not really all completely with it but happy to be here it was, it was a big 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 passage get over here 